Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is lecture 37 and today we will see some more questions on STA concepts. In previous video, we have already provided a questionnaire based on frequently asked questions in the interview and the scores of that quiz gets instantly generated and a copy of that gets mailed to you. The link of that quiz is provided in the description below for your reference and link of that video is also provided for your help. If you wish to receive a certificate by VLSI Academy for the quiz, you need to score minimum 90% in the first attempt and you need to send INR250 via thank you button in the YouTube as fees. We will send you certificate via email once we have verified your records. And now without any further delay, let us get started. Now let us get started with the questions. You can see that there are two waveforms. These are just for the reference. So first question is what are the different types of crosstalk and what are their effects? You can pause the video to think of the answer and then we will resume. So there are two different types of crosstalk. First is positive crosstalk and negative crosstalk. Positive crosstalk means when your aggressor. So let us say first waveform is for aggressor. Aggressor is the one which switches more than the victim that will cause the crosstalk in the victim. So victim is the one which faces the crosstalk and where you see the violations. The typical example for that is the clock. So first is let's say clock. Clock is always the aggressor because it keeps on switching always. But the data path generally does not switch. So it will not switch as frequently as frequently the clock is switching for you. So that is why generally the clock is aggressor and the data is victim. When they both are physically nearer, that time the crosstalk occurs in the victim net. So if the crosstalk is positive, that means that when it is switching, so let's say this clock is switching, at that time your data is also switching. So when that happens, at that time, the transition of your data path improves. And it looks like that it would be good for you, but it does not sometimes. Why? Because your waveform will actually be like this. And if there is some transition that you are expecting in the data and the crosstalk is occurring, then that transition improves and the data path will be now like this. So if I am only assuming here for the rise waveform, so you can see that there is an improvement in the transition. And hence, if the transition is so much good for the data that it is making your entire data path faster, that time there will be hold violations. So there could be a hold violation coming up if there is a crosstalk which we have ignored. So our estimation for hold calculation might be bad if there is a crosstalk and it will help in setup. So it results in it results in good for hold, bad for setup if there is a positive crosstalk. If there is a negative crosstalk, it is just the other way around. By other way around means the clock is shifted by 180 degree phase shift. So 180 degree phase shift means it is now rising. So if your clock is rising, the data is falling. There is a total negative phase shift is there. You are expecting the data to switch like this, but there is a bad transition. So the data will not switch like this. It will switch like this. You can see that because of this, there is a transition change. So therefore, you can say that transition will go bad because the data is getting victimized from active clock transition switching. You can see that clock is switching and it is making the bad transition. Hence, your setup violation can occur or you can say that it is sometimes good for hold, but at least it will be always bad for transition. You can see that there might be transition violation occurring or setup violation will be occurring in the negative crosstalk. These are the two types of crosstalk and these are their effects. Now the next question is at what edge is the setup and hold checked for a half cycle path? You can pause the video if you think of the answer and then resume the video. Now let us see these, uh, this is a typical case where you can see that if this is your launch clock path and this is your capture clock waveform. So this is a typical half cycle path. In a half cycle path, the data is launched from the launch flop. It is expected to be captured in the half cycle. So if this is the full cycle, you will expect that data to be captured here itself instead of here. So 
generally you will see that in the wave in the timing report also when your launch is rising at that time your capture will be falling or other way around like launch is falling at that time your capture will be rising otherwise you can see that in the timing report in the normal cycle path full cycle path you will see that launch and capture either both are rising or both are falling at that time but in the half cycle path it is just the half of the clock period for the data path now at what edge you want the setup and hold to be checked for a half cycle path when launch is happening at this edge you will expect the data to be captured at this edge so this is the edge where you have to draw in front of your interviewer and show that this is your setup check waveform this is the setup and for a hold by default the tool will check for a just one full cycle before so one full cycle before means this one so your hold will be checked at this edge this is very important here to note that hold is checked like this and now the common question that is asked is how you can expect that when launch is happening at zero you can expect the data to be captured before that could be minus one if your clock period is one nanosecond so you can how can you expect the data to be captured early and that is what the hold concept is your data should not be too fast that before it is launched at a particular edge it is getting captured somewhere else that is the typical hold violation now the next most common question that is asked in the interview is at what edge by default setup and hold checks are done for a multi cycle path of 3 in this question by default candidate starts answering but the expectation is first you have to ask this multi cycle path of 3 is it for setup or this constraint is applied for hold by default tool will not take assumption we have to specify for something so we uh, generally it is specified for setup initially so if it is assuming that let's say interviewer has said that it is a multi cycle path of 3 for setup constraint so we have to tell at what edge setup and hold checks are done for that particular constraint let us assume that in a timing path if your launch is happening at this edge and that is zeroth edge so your first edge is by default where you will check the setup but for a multi cycle path of 3 it will check for third edge and that is this edge so here it will check for setup this is your setup edge now the question is for hold by default tool takes one cycle back for hold so tool will check hold at this edge for this edge the hold is done by default so you have to specify explicitly that if there is no constraint specified for hold setup multi cycle it will check at second edge for checking at the same edge you have to specify multi cycle path of 2 so you have to specify mcp 2 for your hold check now let us move on to frequently asked question that is asked in the interview that is what is the use of virtual clock in a design so if this is your partition and this is your some input port so at that time the question asked is what is the virtual clock so virtual clock is created in the design which does not have physical port you can see that there is a flip-flop let's say this flip-flop name is ff1 so it is connected to some clock port so that clock port is physical port clk port which is triggering this particular clk pin and this clk pin is connected physically to this clk port but to do the calculation for your input to reg path which is an interface path there will be assumption that there is certain certain output uh, there is certain logic which is outside of this partition and that has certain input external delay so we specify in the timing report also you can see that it will be exactly mentioned as input external delay where some value is specified and that assumption is made that there is some virtual clock also with same name or maybe different name CLKM let's say and that is triggering that virtual flip-flop so there could be a virtual flip-flop and there could be a virtual logic which is sitting outside 
and it has a certain delay. So this particular timing arc, there will be some delay delta t that we specify as input external delay. And that is why virtual clock is used. It is for calculation of interface path so that you get the accurate latency and accurate data path delay for the input external delay. That is mainly used for timing budgets and that is not physically present in the design. Now the next question that is asked very frequently in the interview if the candidate is do going, doing very good and that is related to useful skew in a design. So that is related to clock push and clock pull also. That is the common concept. So if you have tried everything in your data path, so let's say if your timing path is from FF1 to FF2 and you have tried everything in this particular path and still that data path is not meeting. So data path is not an option for you anymore to touch and that time you can make use of the clock path. Touching the clock path is not recommended in general, but it can be used as a last option if the timing critical path is not meeting. So let us assume that you have a path from FF1 to FF2 with a slack of minus 1.5 NS and it is not meeting. But there is a positive slack of plus 2 NS in the next particular path. You can make use of the skew that is called as making use of skew. So useful skew. You can make use of skew of the clock to fix this particular path. And the technique will be called as clock push in this particular case. So you have a plus 2 NS which you can make use to fix this particular path. Using the slack basically is making use of skew. What you can do is if you push the clock for this particular path. So you can see that timing arc of the data path will be for this particular path will be like this. So the dotted line, this line will be the data path arc for this particular case. So this arc is make is having plus 2 NS. What we can do is we can push this particular path from this. We can insert the buffers here. If we insert buffer here in the uncommon path of the clock pin of FF2 which is launch flop for here. So let's say it is L2 that is launch flop 2 in the timing path. So in this particular timing path this launch flop Two, we are pushing the clock so that the data path effective network delay and entire data path will be having more delay now. So it will, the slack will keep on reducing here. You can see that let's say if you have inserted two buffers of delay of let's say one NS each. So you have actually made the data path pushed by let's say if the, if it is already the, the data path delay is 1 NS, you have made that 1 NS effectively as 3 NS. So the slack will reduce by 2 NS by which you are pushing the data. So now this slack is pushed and it will go down by this much amount. So that is 2 NS here. So it will go down by 2 NS. So, so slack will be effectively zero in this particular path. It is still marginally meeting. And what will happen is you are actually pushing the capture edge of this particular path. This is capture path. So what will happen is if this edge was earlier occurring at let's say 3 NS. So what will happen is it will now occur at 5 NS because we are now pushing the capture edge. And now we are gaining the more skew in this particular path to fix it. So our window, that window required arrival time will have more skew in this particular path. So let us say if the skew in this path was earlier 3 NS, it is now reduced by 2 NS and it is 1 NS. And here it was let's say 1.5 NS skew between this and this pin of the clock pins of this flip flop. The skew was 1.5 NS. Now skew will have been increased since we have inserted two buffers. So skew is increased by 2 NS. And because of this, now we have additional 2 NS to fix this path. And now this path will also meet. This technique is called as useful skew. And this is the concept of clock push since we have pushed the clock for meeting the timing. Similarly, the other way around will be clock pull in which we will pull the clock instead of pushing the clock. 
This concept of useful skew and clock push and clock pull is very important for the interview related purposes. And that's all for this video. We hope that we have made sense in this particular thing. And we hope that you like the video. If you have any doubts, please do share that in the comment section. Thank you.